Okay, hi everyone. Uh, this is the uh, the web from uh, 2024 tutorial on large energy models, uh, progresses and directions. Uh, so today we are going to introduce some existing advanced work on uh, large energy models for graphs, graph related tasks, graph questions, and graph learnings. And so there are five parts today. So at first, uh, Professor Chopin will give uh, opening and introducing about this topic. And then uh, Xu Bing, uh, Jia Bing, Liang Hao uh, will give uh, talks about the four parts research lines in the larger English models for graphs. Uh, so hope all you guys enjoy this journey. Uh, let's move into the larger English models for graphs. So OK, uh, for now, uh, Professor Huang, can you hear me? Yeah, no problem. Uh, OK, uh, you can start. Okay, so um, hello everyone. So so happy to uh, have a chance to talk to you and to just uh, further uh, discuss some uh, recent advances of like uh, how to integrate large language models with graph learning. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> welcome to our tutorial, and we are have like a very uh, good several uh, presenters here, and we have uh, I will just do the uh, introduction. And followed by me uh, and Xu Bing, then and Jia Bing Tang and uh, Liang Hao Xia, and we, you know, just to present some details of in uh, regarding like some uh how to you know just uh, to uh, graph language models uh with application in recommendation and also with some like a uh, uh, graph language models and also uh, graph foundation models. Okay, so so uh, our research group uh, will be uh, like the data intelligence group lab at HKU University of Hong Kong, and we have a lot of like open source research repositories uh, published in our um, like uh, website, and just feel free to uh, check our recent research works and with the open source resources and for further investigation. And uh, so uh, graph R. Uh, very important structures and to describe the and analyzing the relationships and interactions uh, or just dependencies among different entities in our real life applications. And we have a lot of like a graph structures. First, we have like social connections between users and can be representative as a, as a graph. And we also have some transportation graph and which connect different locations and also the times nodes and to present a graph structure and the spatial temporal data. And we also have some like uh, academic graph which connect different authors and papers as well as the published venues like a triple W or KDD. Oh, okay, so and we also have some for the bioinformatics domains and the proteins interaction relationships can also be uh, abstract as a graph structures. And we also have some de uh, devices. If we consider the nodes of the mobile devices or cell phones, and we can connect the different devices and uh, generate a communication graph. And uh, well, as you all know, the knowledge graph is also very important uh, data sources for, you know, just to present some uh, structure, uh, like a semantics information relevant to our real life and also word knowledge. So uh, in summary, the graph are very important and because it characterizes some very important relationships between different entities in our real life. Okay, and recently, uh, as inspired by the success of the uh, language models, and we also, you know, just uh, would like to dive into the domain of how to integrate the graph learning with large language models, because a lot of like the graph data is also associated with the language data. I mean, we, I, I mean the texture data. So it can describe some very rich information or properties associated with different nodes and also the edges. For example, in recommend assistance, we have a rich textual uh, descriptions associated with different products, like video description or product description or the reviews information uh, lived by like different customers. So we have a lot of like uh, language data and I, and we believe it, it will be beneficial if we incorporate such textual data into the graph learning because we think that latent like some information or graph structure information can be you know supplementaries and with the language data and to further advance the domain of graph learning and to achieve a very, very general and a strong graph models. Okay, so that will be our objective. Okay, so uh, talk to like the inter integration of like uh, a graph and large language models. We have several key names we, we can investigate. So first we can use LLM as a 
uh, data segmenters, you know, just uh, to integrate like the uh, to to do the text embedding and to integrate the generated text information with the graph structure information and to improve the performance. And we also can, you know, just directly leverage large language models to as a presenters like our graph GPT model. And because it, you know, just we, if we can do that, we can also uh, to, you know, just uh, 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 obtain the very strong language capacities of the large language models and uh, to achieve very, you know, just uh, uh, to, to handle the zero shot prediction cases. And we also can, you know, just some for um, to learn uh, some universal like a uh, graph structure information across different data sets we have. So it will be very important and uh, to build a graph foundation model and uh, to, you know, just uh, to, uh, to, to equip the graph model with a very strong generalization capacities to uh, performs very well in zero shot scenarios because sometimes we we may may suffer from some data sparsity or data scarcity like issues and we also you know just always need to deal with some new arriving data which might not have been uh, sufficient times to train the model from scratch or just update a model with a uh, in a uh, real time manner so that will be very important to learn some universal representation and uh, with the consideration of the text information associated with graph structure information okay so um, so I will uh, give I'll give my mic to the next presenter, and I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. And feel free to uh, shoot me a message if you show some interest uh, interesting in, in our work. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, uh, thank you, Professor Fan. Uh, it's a very nice opening introduction. Uh, so uh, following up, we are going to start our tutorial about our dream models for graphs. Uh, sorry, I'm going to share my share my screen in the slide. Okay. Okay, so um so uh as we know uh, I think we want to so graphs is a very hot topic. So uh, the research is that it's always involving. So today we are going to actually have a four part thank you just how to use the larger models for graphs. So we build our astronomy based on the framework designed of various algorithms. So uh, you know, when you want to process the graph data, you usually have to use the uh, graph neural networks. So graph neural networks actually work close with the larger models to build the algorithms or framework to process the graph data and answer the questions. So the first, uh, so the first two sections are two different paradigms. The first is the uh, graph neural networks as the prefix, and then it's the larger language models and the prefix to design the framework. And Jabin and Anhao we are going to introduce these two parts. And then we are going to have a 30 minutes coffee break. And then I'm going to introduce the larger models and graphs integration. And, and finally, we are going to introduce some words that only use the larger models to solve the graph related tasks. And here is the QR code for our tutorial. You can scan this QR code to have a basic outline of the, uh, today's tutorial. And it is also accessible on the Voha app. Um, okay, so let's introduce our uh, first speaker, Jabin Han, who is also the first author of Graph GPT, High GPT, several foundation uh, models for the large language models and graphs. Uh, let's welcome uh, Jabin Han. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I'm first, I will introduce myself. Uh, I'm the first year PhD student majoring in data science and uh, HKU supervised by Chang Huang, and uh, my research interests lie in uh, large language models and other AIGC uh, techniques, and graph learning, trust versus machine learning, and uh, other deep learning applications. And uh, feel free to connect me and uh, talk more about the progress of the, about the, this uh, research fields. And uh, the first category I'd like to talk about is uh, GNs as prefix. 
it can be further divided into two uh, classes. The first, the first class is a uh, node, node level tokenization. Uh, and uh, this uh, class retain the unical uh, the structure uh, representation of each node as much as possible. And uh, the second category is uh, graph level tokenization. And uh, this category abstracts node uh, representations into unified graph representations through uh, various polling uh, operations. And uh, uh, the node level and the graph level uh, graph tokens are fed into the LMs with the uh, nature language tokens and uh, subsequently handle graph, different graph learning tasks such as node classification, link prediction, and uh, graph classification. And uh, to be specifically, uh, the node uh, level tokenization motivation could be make the LM understand the fine grain node level structure information and discrete the relationships between them. And uh, each node of the graph structure is, is, um, is input into the LM. And the challenge of the node level tokenization could be uh, how to let LM dis uh, distinguish a different node of the graph level graph representation and fully utilize them to let them um, directly uh, conduct uh, the graph learning tasks such as node clarification and the link prediction. So uh, the first paper I like to talk about is graph GPT, and uh, it's uh, recently accepted by Sigma twenty uh, twenty four and. Uh, uh, Effectively, combining LM with graph learning as predictor poses uh, some non-trivial uh, challenges, uh, which is uh, showed in the uh, slides. The first challenge is how uh, is how we in, uh, how we feed graph structure into the LM uh, in which uh, format in the nature language or other format. It could be a question. And the second uh, research question is how we can empower LM to understand graph structures. Uh, that means how to uh, how we can align the LM's reasoning or language ability with uh, graph learning or graph structure understanding. And the, the, the third uh, research question is how to endure LMs with the ability to reason, uh, reason the step by step for some uh, very complex zero shot graph learning tasks. Because uh, as we all know that uh, different graph learning tasks, uh, even though, uh, or different data sets have uh, different, uh, uh, have different categories and uh, how we can transfer the, uh, and how can we transfer the uh, knowledge between different data sets could be a very hard and complex uh, task. So uh, we like to address these challenges one by one. Um, for the first research question, there are mainly three approaches. First, um, for specific paper classification uh, uh, citation graph, we can just uh, satisfy the paper with graph without graph structures, uh, which means uh, we don't provide the neighbor's information uh, for the test uh, uh, for the paper classification. But we found that the uh, even though the chat GPT, uh, which is the most powerful uh, LM in the world, uh, maybe one of, uh, could, can fail uh, to complete the paper classification in some cases. Uh, and uh, the second category uh, and the second format is that uh, we use the text-based graph uh, in the nature language prompt to. Uh, assist us to uh, complete the graph uh, paper or graph cl uh, node classification task. But uh, uh, we found that we, uh, we use the graph, uh, we use the chat GPT, it also failed. So uh, the second, uh, and uh, the graph and the nature language tokens imposed uh, to the LM is uh, uncontrollable uh, in the second case. So the third case is graph GPT, and uh, we found that it could be uh, if it could effectively learn from the graph, 
uh, in our format, that is graph tokens, and uh, uh, the token lens is controllable in our cases. So uh, let's dive into the technical details of the our graph 3 uh, We achieve that by introducing the graph tokens. Uh, we regard graph to graph as a sequence of uh, graph tokens, and the overall tech architecture is shown in the screen. Uh, the graph is. Uh, uh, the graph is encoded by a pre-trained graph encoder, and uh, the graph encoder here could be any graph neural network, such as a uh, graph transformer, uh, graph uh, convolutional networks, and so on. And the graph embedding are fed into uh, the projector uh, and uh, obtain the graph tokens. And the uh, graph tokens uh, pass. Uh, graph, graph token here is uh, is Graph token here is uh, a lion with the natural language token and uh, uh, subsequently uh, input into the LM and uh, uh, and we uh, further use the uh, graph, instru uh, graph instruction tuning to let LM understand the graph and follow the instruction uh, to uh, do some downstream tasks and uh, as, as the figure show the graph uh, instruction tuning has two stage. So in particular, the per first part of our graph GPT is test graph grounding. Uh, we use it, we use it as graph encoder with uh, nature language uh, alignment, and uh, specifically we use the graph text appear uh, graph text appear to uh, into the uh, GN encoder and the test the transformer uh, and uh, conduct the contrastive contrastive learning between the text uh, graph. Uh, modality and the test of modality to uh, obtain a, a text uh, to obtain a text uh, graph uh, grounded grounded uh, graph encoder. And the second part of our graph GPT aim to address the research question too. Uh, that is, how can we empower LM to understand graph structures? Uh, our answer is uh, our graph instruction tuning paradigm. The graph instruction tuning paradigm has two stages. And the first stage is self-supervised instruction tuning. Uh, we input uh, we input the unlabeled graph uh, into the LM and the left LM uh, to match the graph tokens uh, with the corresponding nature language content in the prompt. Uh, for example, different nodes uh, here may be uh, different papers in a citation graph. And uh, we want to uh, let them um, uh, to uh, uh, reorder the uh, re, re uh, sorry uh, reorder the uh, shuffle the paper list uh, uh, corresponding to the uh, graph tokens uh, to let them um, can distinguish different nodes uh, in the input graph tokens uh, co corresponding to the paper list. And the second stage is task specific instruction tuning. We use the uh, instruction data about uh, uh, different uh, data sets for the different downstream tasks. And uh, uh, the and the and here is the uh, prompt template about the node classification and the link prediction. Then we answer the question three about uh, by distributing reasoning ability from a pow more powerful module such as ChatGPT and uh, through the chain of thought distribution. Okay, so what is chain of thought? In other words, uh, chain of thought is, is that uh, simply either please think by step after your original uh, prompt. And uh, as we all know that uh, the uh, reasoning ability or the uh, effectiveness of the chain of thought is uh, is uh, uh, is related to the uh, module parameters. So, uh, how can we uh, how can we uh, increase our module uh, uh, reasoning or the effectiveness of the chain of thought by uh, uh, without increasing the, our module's parameters? Uh, that is, the, um, our answer is that the chain of thought distillation. Uh, we all know that ChatGPT is a powerful but, but uh, closed source uh, and cost uh, module. So we uh, 
use uh, the zero integration to uh, let uh, uh, ChatGPT generate some uh, various uh, downstream uh, instructions, and uh, we use this uh, generated instruction to uh, instruct the tuning of our uh, seven billion uh, graph GPT that it could be uh, lightweight and uh, very smart about our graph learning downstream tasks. And the experimental results show that our graph GPT uh, outperform SORTA uh, baselines not only supervised uh, but uh, zero shot settings. Know that uh, we are a very first uh, uh, proposed to deal with the zero shot challenge in the graph learning domain and uh, applied it in the notification application and the link prediction. And then it's some results uh, of our uh, graph GPT is uh, various uh, in the uh, some uh, supervised and zero shot settings. Also, uh, we would like to highlight the genera uh, generalization ability investigation of our graph GPT. So, uh, specifically, we mix up different kinds of instruction data to obtain multiple data combinations, such as different data source, uh, some uh, different data patterns, that is whether we, we use uh, the uh, chain of thought patterns or just the straightforward uh, uh, patterns, and different tasks, such as node classification and link prediction. And we uh, have some, uh, we also have some uh, interesting observation that uh, that is uh, more data uh, will boost uh, module transferability, which means uh, there are some significant improvement in the zero shot settings if we use more data. And uh, uh, also there are, um, also the more data means, uh, uh, yes, uh, but our, our graph GPT will not forget uh, something uh, he uh, learned before, which means uh, uh, training our graph GPT on multiple data sets, it will benefit or learn uh, from the multiple data source. And, uh, and the, the third observation is that uh, if we use a multi task uh, uh, data set to instruct and tuning our graph GPT, uh, the generalization ability on uh, multiple task uh, graph learning tasks will also benefit. And uh, uh, it's our uh, module, and it's our module case study of our graph GPT. And uh, uh, the, uh, there are three uh, class, uh, different uh, classes uh, to prompt. Uh, and the first one is uh, from the graph uh, GPT with only node content. Uh, and uh, the second uh, and the second uh, category is uh, from the um, uh, graph GPT with node content and uh, uh, test based uh, graph structures. And the third one is our graph GPT. And uh, uh, it could be observed that uh, the our graph GPT achieved the best uh, uh, and the best performance and the reasonable reasons. And more details could be uh, found uh, showing the slide. Uh, like project page, uh, code, uh, module, in huggy face, and uh, you are really recommended to scan the QR code of our web uh, page, uh, project page, and uh, uh, there and there is one more thing that don't hesitate to give us your start to support our GitHub repo, and uh, uh, our web GitHub repo starts is over uh, 400, and uh, we are. Uh, very same. We thank uh, all the uh, uh, researchers to give us that. Uh, uh, thank you very much. And next, I'd like to uh, introduce a very uh, latest word named uh, high GPT from also from our group, and uh, uh, that is uh, heterogeneous graph language model, which propose a uh, uh, heterogeneous graph instruction tuning framework for the large language models. Uh, before introducing the technical details of our uh, I will uh, briefly introduce the uh, I will briefly introduce some background knowledge of the heterogeneous graphs. Uh, the graph I uh, introduced before about uh, is uh, or homogeneous graph, and the, the uh, heterogeneous graph here uh, uh, means that uh, the heterogeneous graph contains uh, not only one type of node and one type of edge. 
uh, uh, it contains the multiple uh, nodes and uh, add tabs uh, in our heterogeneous graph. Uh, because, uh, you know, in the real world, there are a lot of graphs that contain multiple tabs of the nodes and the apps, such as uh, in the Uh, such as in this uh, graph, uh, that is a, a movie internet uh, graph, uh, maybe from the IMDb. Um, there are three types of the uh, nodes, such as actor, movie, and director. And then there are uh, many four types of the uh, edge, that is uh, movie to the director, director to the movie, uh, actor to the movie, and uh, movie to the director. And that is a real world, uh, real world heterogeneous graph. And uh, in the hidden genus world, there are uh, the mental relation, that is a uh, representation of the uh, relationship between different types of the nodes connected by an edge. And for example, uh, an example of the mental relation is uh, E uh, equal U and uh, V. And uh, the mental relation could be the uh, tall U, and that is the tab of the uh, node U, and and the uh, row E, that is the tab of the edge E, and the uh, tall V, that is the node V. That is an uh, example of the uh, meta relation. So, I think uh, everyone of you know how and uh, what is a uh, heterogeneous graph. Okay, so the uh, so our motivation is to combine the heterogeneous world with and to enable and to direct conduct uh, heterogeneous world learning tasks such as heterogeneous uh, notification and vinculation. But we found some unique challenges here, uh, different from the graph uh, duty. The first research question is how can we deal with uh, the relation type heterogeneity shift across different uh, heterogeneous graphs. That is, uh, we want to build one heterogeneous mo graph module for or, or any heterogeneous graph. Uh, and the type heterogeneity shift here is uh, that a different heterogeneous graph have different type of the nodes and edges, such as uh, uh, in, uh, in movie internet, uh, Heterogeneous graph. There are uh, there are movies, movie tab, uh, actor tab, and director tab. And uh, uh, in and in uh, academic uh, citation, uh, heterogeneous heterogeneous graph. There are the no tab of the uh, paper, actor, uh, author, conference, and so on. So how can we do with how can we do with how can we do with the uh, tab heterogeneity shift is a question. And the second question is, how can LM understand complex heterogeneous graph structures? Uh, because, you know, uh, we should uh, let them to uh, aware the nodes and edge tabs and also aware the uh, graph, heterogeneous graph structures. So, uh, intuitively, uh, it's more difficult than the homogeneous graph. And the third question is how to address the data sparsity for module fine tuning for the heterogeneous graph learning task. Because uh, in the heterogeneous graph learning uh, domain, uh, few shot uh, settings are, also, uh, are always conducted to in the experiment session. So we want to further uh, push forward this uh, domain with the zero shot heterogeneous learning graph learning. So, all in all, uh, we want to uh, build one module for any heterogeneous graph with few supervised signals. And the overview of our graph, high GPT, is uh, showing the uh, figure. Our high GPT encodes any uh, heterogeneous graph uh, into the heterogeneous graph token through pre trained in context uh, heterogeneous graph tokenizer, which address. Uh, the research, uh, uh, research question one. And uh, these heterogeneous graph tokens are uh, combined with uh, natural language tokens and uh, fed into the large language models. And uh, as for the tuning paradigm of our high GPT, uh, of our high GPT, uh, there, are, uh, there are also two stage 
uh, Tuesday uh, instruction training in paradigm and uh, uh, through the uh, Tuesday instruction training paradigm, we can inject uh, the PyGPT with the uh, 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 heterogeneous relation awareness, uh, homogeneous uh, relation, uh, relation awareness, and uh, downstream heterogeneity aware uh, ability. So uh, let's dive into the technical detail of the HGPT. The first part of our HGPT is in context uh, heterogeneous block tokenizer to address the research question one. Specifically, uh, we conduct a graph tokenization with meta projector with a heterogeneous graph. And the uh, H and the heterogeneous uh, graph tokenizer is uh, shown um, in the uh, in this figure and uh, uh, it can it, it can transfer the heterogeneous graph with the uh, heterogeneous uh, heterogeneous uh, feature matrix and uh, uh, heterogeneity, heterogeneous uh, graph ad identity into the uh, different uh, uh, heterogeneous, heterogeneous graph tokens. And uh, it could be implied uh, using various backbone heterogeneous graph neural networks such as, uh, uh, such as uh, the heterogeneous uh, graph transformer and so on. And uh, the, uh, the, the massive passing uh, paradigm of uh, the HGT is showing the screen and uh, we, uh, we can further uh, the, subs uh, the subsequent uh, technical detail is based on the hydrogen uh, the HGT is massive passing paradigm. And uh, uh, but we can observe that uh, such a feature uh, encoded by the HGT uh, prevent most uh, graph, heterogeneous graph modules from transferring uh, from the one heterogeneous uh, data set to another one because uh, we, we can observe that uh, the uh, parameter of HGT is based on the type of the nodes uh, that is tau u and uh, the type of the x that is rho e. So, uh, so the nature or the architecture of the HGT is constrained on different heterogeneous data sites. So uh, how can we deal with that? Our answer is to uh, inject the meta uh, projector uh, to uh, into the uh, any heterogeneous graph neural network. Uh, here is HGT with the uh, uh, parameter uh, heterogeneity. Uh, that is, uh, we, uh, we use uh, the the uh, MLP is here to uh, transfer the uh, different uh, uh, type, uh, node type or edge types representation into the parameters. And the parameter here, here could be used in the HGT or other backbone of the uh, uh, heterogeneous one neural networks. And uh, how can we, uh, how can we obtain the uh, representation of the uh, of the node and the uh, node aware parameters and the uh, edge aware parameters. Uh, and uh, our answer is uh, the language in, enriched the uh, heterogeneous representations. Uh, that means we could use language to describe the, uh, describe the nodes or edge tabs. And uh, such as uh, if we have the edge tab movie to director, we can, uh, we can obtain the description that is uh, the movie is directed by the director and the film features direction by the director. And uh, this, uh, this, nature, this language is, uh, is uh, uniform for different heterogeneous data sites. So we use this uh, description to, uh, to, uh, represent, uh, to represent the uh, edge tab or no tab. And we use, uh, further use the uh, pre-trained uh, uh, L, uh, LM uh, that is language model such as sentence bird to encode the, the text uh, uh, based heterogeneity uh, uh, representation and uh, obtain the uh, parameters further. And uh, to conduct the initial text ground, grounding, we introduce lightweight text graph contrast alignment, uh, uh, which is shown in the, in the slides, and uh, is also. Uh, and it is also uh, initially aligning the graph uh, modality and the text modality here. 
And then, uh, then we propose heterogeneous, uh, heterogeneous uh, graph instruction tuning to answer the research question two, to enable the language module uh, that it, uh, to, it, to effect di distinguish between different types of the uh, input uh, heterogeneous graph tokens and the specific nodes within each type. Uh, we propose uh, two, uh, two types of the instruction tuning uh, task. The first task is heterogeneous uh, relation awareness. And uh, it's, it could be an intertype token matching. Uh, th that is, uh, uh, that is uh, we want to let uh, the LM to distinguish between different type of the, uh, of the uh, heterogeneous graph. And uh, another one is homogeneous relation awareness. Uh, that is, uh, we want to uh, ask the LM to distinguish the uh, different nodes in one tab in the heterogeneous graph. And the template uh, is over here. And then we want to uh, customize the reasoning ability of the LM for specific uh, downstream tasks, uh, such as uh, we, we introduce the heterogeneity aware fine tuning to instruct the LM to conduct downstream tasks, such as node classification and uh, the prompt template is here. And then we focus on the research question three. Uh, in particular, uh, in practical scenarios of the heterogeneous graph learning, data scarcity open forces are non trivial challenging. And uh, this is especially true when using the heterogeneous graph to models such as uh, the code start. Uh, user item recommendation system. So uh, how can we obtain, uh, how can we use uh, just uh, some uh, very limited uh, uh, supervised signal to instruct the tuning our, uh, uh, tuning the uh, uh, that is our, uh, the our answer is mis mis uh, mixture of thought uh, for the graph instruction uh, argumentation. And we use different, uh, Different prompt engineering uh, techniques to prompt uh, uh, ChatGPT or GraphGPT, uh, this uh, powerful LM to uh, generate some instructions uh, uh, with uh, different features and uh, uh, use this uh, uh, instruction to instruction tuning our uh, our LM. And the, the prompt and the prompt template is showing over here. And we also conduct some uh, supervised and literature performance comparison, uh, which is showing the uh, figure. Uh, and, the, and, the, and, there, uh, and this is the uh, supervised setting, and uh, there is the uh, literature setting. And we also conduct the graph in context learning, uh, and uh, we observe uh, three observations in the uh, uh, graph. Uh, in context learning techniques, and we uh, so and uh, we uh, found that one shot uh, high GPT could be uh, six shots of with uh, of, with our graph in context learning techniques, and it and this is a case study, and uh, more details uh, could be found on our homepage, and the. Uh, uh, other words about uh, the node level tokenization. tokenization uh, uh, could be uh, one, one of the concurrent work is uh, graph translator and the graph translator pr proposed to the use of the translator with uh, shared self attention to align both the target uh, target nodes and the instructions and then is the cross attention that is a uh, uh to uh, to to uh, obtain the uh, node node level uh, representation or node level tokens and then input the node level tokens uh, into the LM with the nature language tokens and conduct the, uh, some uh, downstream tasks such as the node classification and, uh, uh, other, and, uh, and other and other uh, and the other work uh, we want to introduce is about the unigraph and the, the unigraph uh, leverage the text attribute graph for the for unify uh, for unifying node uh, representations 
uh, with the language modules and the graph neural network, and uh, uh, it and uh, it found that it could be uh, uh, and the experiment uh, and the experiment found that uh, it could be transferred from different data sets and uh, conduct a few shots uh, in context learning and uh, the uh, zero shot uh, graph learning tasks. And uh, other node level uh, tokenization uh, work is the uh, G uh, Gmility and uh, is a unified graph test module. And it leveraged uh, the nature language instruction to address the uh, label uh, challenge in the molecular uh, related tasks. And uh, uh, it used the uh, no, it, it used the language tokens, uh, it unified the language tokens and the, the uh, node classification node tokens uh, uh, and the nature language tokens uh, to input uh, to uh, together uh, input into the language module and conduct the molecular related uh, task downstream task. And uh, and uh, uh, and that, that, that is uh, the node level tokenization work. And the graph level tokenization work uh, here I want to introduce is uh, capture is to capture the high level global uh, semantic uh, information of the graph structures. And uh, the graph here is uh, compressed into a fixed length token sequence using a, a various uh, specific polling method, uh, such as uh, mean polling or other uh, average polling to obtain a, a fixed length token sequence uh, to represent a global graph structure. And uh, the first work I want to introduce here uh, uh, is uh, the graph LM. And the graph LM utilizes a graph transformer that incorporates uh, the learnable query and the positional encoding to encode the uh, graph structure and obtain the graph representation through so pulling. And the, the downstream task of the graph LM is uh, the graph learn, graph reasoning task, such as from the, uh, the shortest path of the graph or others. And uh, it's also uh, observe some uh, uh, very amazing zero shot settings, uh, zero shot uh, experimental observations here. And then another uh, re representative work of, of the graph level tokenization is instructor uh, more here. And uh, uh, it used uh, it used the test. Uh, it used the one uh, one D uh, molecular sequence here as uh, the first modality input into the LM and the uh, second and the second uh, modality of the LM is uh, the molecular graph structure and the third uh, modality into the LM is the, uh, is the nature language and uh, unify the three modality of the uh, molecular it can instruct the LM to perform molecular related work uh, with uh, directly using the nature language. And uh, uh, some very, uh, and the G, uh, G retrieval could be a very first uh, uh, graph level uh, organization uh, work to combine the graph learning, uh, combine graph learning with uh, uh, and, and then it utilizes the retrieval augmented techniques to obtain the subgraph structure. And then it, com it completes uh, uh, various downstream tasks uh, in the graph QA, uh, that is graph questioning answering uh, task uh, through uh, com through the combination of the LM and the graph encoder, and uh, uh, and uh, also uh, some previous work like the G and P, uh, it employs the uh, cross mod modality pooling to uh, integrate the node uh, representation to encode it by the graph encoder with uh, nature language tokens and uh, resulting uh, some very uh, amazing uh, uh, zero shot settings in the common sense and the biomedical uh, KG uh, answering, yeah. And uh, uh, very, uh, and uh, in this uh, section, uh, graph, uh, graph level uh, tokenization uh, in the GN as prefix, 
is uh, more CA and it's uh, accepted by the EMLP uh, uh, 2023 and the uh, and the uh, and it's uh, it's conducted the molecular related work, I mean, molecular related downstream task. And then uh, it is found that existing uh, molecular language modeling methods could be invite, uh, divided into uh, three categories. And then the first category is about uh, we only use the 1D language modeling to include the uh, molecular sequence of the uh, 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 molecular sequence into the LM and the, the LM directly uh, based on the molecular uh, sequence to uh, conduct the downstream uh, task such as uh, molecular classification or others. Uh, but here, the limitation is that uh, we cannot uh, fully utilize the, the graph structure of the molecular to uh, uh, in, in here, because we only use the 1D language uh, sequence of the modular. And the, the other one is the cross modal contrast server learning method. Uh, that is, uh, we use uh, the graph structure here and uh, the uh, 1D sequence of the modular here to align two modality between the uh, graph, uh, modular graph, and the uh, language uh, modality. But uh, the but we only we can only conduct the uh, text uh, mod, uh, text and modular retrieval using uh, this method and then uh, more CA uh, conduct the uh, the framework here to and uh, with their uh, framework uh, we can not only conduct the text we can only uh, we can not only conduct the uh, test uh, uh, molecular retrieval, we can only have more downstream tasks such as molecular QA uh, and the molecular uh, priority prediction and so on. And the, uh, and the training pipeline or the uh, framework of the more CA is uh, divided into three uh, stage training pipeline. The first uh, uh, training pipeline is to uh, conduct the cross model contrast learning here. And uh, it, uh, it used the molecular test appear to conduct the contrast learning between the structure modality and the test modality. And uh, uh, through the, this, uh, the, uh, through the first stage of the training, uh, we obtained uh, we obtained a, a, a molecular graph encoder here, and we use the uh, and, uh, uh, and the specific. Stage one module is here. It used the uh, Qformer with the uh, learnable query parameter and uh, uh, to align the graph structure with the test uh, uh, test modality with this uh, Qformer. And uh, uh, after the retraining stage of, uh, one, uh, it's uh, obtained uh, the parameters of this Qformer. And this, uh, the parameter of this performer is uh, utilized uh, in the subs uh, subsequent retraining stage two and the fine tuning stage. And the uh, module architecture is, is here. Uh, it, uh, here, uh, the stage two retraining uh, uh, task is to uh, use the structure and uh, test and the graph structure here to. Uh, to 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 uh, inject the uh, structure understanding and the molecular understanding ability into the LM. and the uh, the fine tuning task here is uh, uh, the architecture is similar as uh, stage two and uh, uh, the uh, the difference is about data and uh, it uses the downstream task data to uh, uh, instruction tuning the uh, uh, the uh, whole architecture of the more CA and uh, uh, or uh, related work of the uh, uh, GNS prefix uh, work is uh, that's uh, is or and uh, uh, okay that uh, okay very nice talk uh, so Jarvin has gone through the 
first part, the genome as prefix, which uh, we can utilize the graph neural networks to give the node level embeddings or graph level embeddings as the input tokens for the large language models. So the large language models can process the both the natural language and also the graph tokens. So um, uh, so for now we have a five minutes QA section. So if uh, there is any questions about the first part about the GM as prefix. So uh, if there are no questions, then we can have a five minutes break. So uh, next part we'll start by uh, 1425. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I, I want to ask, have you compared the um, graph GPT with uh, HIM GPT? Oh, yeah. Uh, th th that is a good question. Uh, that is, uh, 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 have we uh, compared the HGPT with the graph GPT? Oh, yeah. Uh, we conduct the experiment uh, uh, of the conversion of the graph GPT and the HGPT. And, uh, uh, but uh, due to the time, uh, time uh, limit limitation in the, uh, in the submission of the of paper, uh, we we don't uh, involve the combination of the HGPT uh, and graph GPT in the submission uh, or other uh, submission uh, process. But uh, in the, uh, because uh, HGPT is uh, in the peer review session. So uh, in the rebuttal session, we, we add the uh, experiments uh, in the uh, compression of the uh, graph GPT and HGPT. And uh, we will involve it in the, a further version of the high GPT. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, high GPT is better because you know uh, high GPT is uh, it is conducted in the uh, heterogeneous graph learning task, and the uh, and our graph GPT is only focused on the uh, hom homogeneous graph learning task. Uh, on ho yeah, on homogeneous graph, yeah, high uh, GPT is better. Because if we would, uh, we conduct the uh, future setting, because you know uh, uh, the graph GPT is only conduct the fourth uh, four shot uh, supervised setting and third shot settings. We uh, don't con uh, conduct the uh, future setting. Uh, if we conduct the future setting on uh, homogeneous graph, uh, we, we we found that uh, employing our uh, MOT, that is a mixture of thought. Method the few shot uh, the few shot uh, instruction tuning setting uh, our high GPT is better than the graph GPT yeah oh, okay so very questions so uh, if there is no questions we can have a two minutes break and the next session will start by about two minutes later and it's be fine. Uh, okay, so the next part of the large language models for graphs uh, is that yeah. so you can use uh, large language models itself as the prefix to like uh, encoding some features, uh, the type embeddings, or to uh, enhance the uh, text descriptions, like about the nodes on the edges in the graphs. Also, the large language models can provide some uh, supplied signals for the graph learning. So then uh, the postdoc Liang Hao will go to introduce this part. Uh, let's welcome Liang Hao. Thanks for the introduction. Hi, everyone. 
I'm Lian Hao Xia. I'm the postdoc in uh, Professor Chao Huang's group. And I will lead the second part of this tutorial. Uh, we will talk about methods that utilize LLMs as the prefix component. These methods utilize LLMs to acquire some results, including uh, some encoded representations and prediction labels. And by utilizing these results, the encoding process and the model training process of genes can be improved. So in a finer granularity, actually this type of methods can still be divided into two different categories. The first category uses LMs as embedders to generate representations for graph elements given the graph adjacency information and the textual features. And the second category uses LMs as labelers they generate different kinds of labels that can be used in downstream graph training tasks. These labels range from uh, like node level labels to link level labels. And also there is uh, uh, there are other scenarios like some representation level labels. We will talk about this later. So first, let's talk about the first category of this uh, LMS prefix. Um, LM the, as the embedder, the motivation of this category is usually to address the diverse node embedding or features, uh, feature embedding spaces of different graph data. The diversity in feature space causes the generalization ability for, uh, causes low generalization ability for the uh, GN models. For example, you can expect that a graph model trained for text attributed graphs can hardly be reused for non-textual features, except from the generalization ability issues. It also can cause some low representation quality issues in the initial encoding phase for the graph models. So this can severely harm the graph encoding process. To address these issues, this, uh, this research line leverages LIM's powerful language summarization and processing abilities to augment and enhance textual features. And subsequently, it leverages LIM's text representation learning abilities to generate high quality embeddings, which can be easily used in subsequent graph models. And also it is worth noting that to do so, these methods uh, needs to be conducted on uh, text attributed graphs i.e. TAGs. Um, so specifically, uh, these three methods in this page employ LM generated embeddings as the initial node representations for the following uh, graph neural networks. Uh, GLM uses language models to encode node specific texts, and the generated embeddings are then used by the GN aggregator and the decoder to make some graph predictions. And the second method, syntax, learns a language model and a GN model towards optimizing the downstream graph tasks. And the GN component employs text embeddings generated by the language model as inputs. And the third method, GPROMPT, instead trains a graph adapter for pre-trained language models to enable text-based graph predictions. Also following this research line, um, tape further enriches the textual features by generating some predictions and explanations. These augmented texts are uh, combined with the original title and abstract text information to produce enhanced text embeddings for GM predictions. And also, OFA method also utilizes LM to generate some text embeddings for initial node representation. Additionally, this method utilizes text embedding methods uh, to, uh, for the task description text in this method. And in this way, we can facilitate a unified formulation for different graph tasks. And our group has also done a work located in this research line. Weiwei, as the first author, has proposed LM REC, which uses LM to augment recommendation graphs in two dimensions. It not, it not only enhances no textual attributes as the previous works do, but also augments some uh, user item interaction edges as well. This greatly alleviates the data sparsity and noise issues of recommendation graphs. 
This work has received more than 250 stars on GitHub. And welcome to taking a look at our release paper PDF and the uh, GitHub repository using the QR codes. And we have also provided a Chinese article for this paper on our group Gong Zhong Hao. The QR code is also presented here. So welcome to subscribe. Okay, as we have mentioned, there are two categories for the RMS prefix master. The first one uses the ions to generate some textual embeddings uh, to, and to enhance the graph encoding process. Well, the second category uses ions as the labeler to generate labels related to the graph data. These generated labels are used to enhance the model training of graph neural networks. So specifically, the motivation of this type of method is usually to address the insufficiency of graph labels. Such insufficiency can exist in many aspects, including node class labels and binary link labels. And there is an additional case in which the GN representations are low quality, and we want to generate some labels for the uh, representation learning. The label generation process is based on three strengths of LMs. Firstly, LMs are adept at language understanding and reasoning. This helps comprehend textual descriptions and make predictions with high accuracy. Secondly, LMs can generate quality semantic representations to generate representation labels for the low, qual low quality representation issue. And thirdly, LMs contain diverse knowledge about the world. We can utilize its specialty to do the work for human labelers. Next, let's talk about some specific works. LM, GNN, and ENT both generate node labels using LMs. This mitigates the label sparsity for node classification tasks. And the general language processing abilities also endorse these two methods with the capabilities to generalize to graphs with different label sets. And while these methods generate node nodes level labels using LMs, we have also proposed an LM enhanced graph structure learning method named Graph Edit. The first author, Zri Guo, is a research intern in our group. This method conducts instruction tuning for an LM to generate accurate link labels for the graph structure learning task. Though there are less labels for the graph structure learning task, uh, this method cleverly generates the instruction tuning samples by referring to the homogeneous training labels. To enhance the model efficiency, this method also proposes an LM-based edge predictor for candidate pre-selection. We have also released the PDF paper, the, the code and data, and the Chinese Gong Zhonghao article for this paper. The GitHub repository for this paper has recently garnered over 90 stars. We are invited to explore this work further through the provided QR codes. Okay, except from the node level and the link level label generation, one of Xu Bin's first author work, RM Rec, has provided effective solutions to representation improvements for recommendation. RM Rec generates some representation labels using LM. It uses LM for both text generation and representation. This process mainly involves user and item profile generation and the generated representations for these profiles are then aligned with the traditional gn based encoders through mutual information maximization. This method aims at minimizing the noise in both the textual view and the graph view. Welcome to explore more about this wonderful work through the QR codes of the PDF paper and the open source GitHub project. The project has gained more than 200 stars recently. So uh, next, I will talk about one of our attempts towards graph foundation models. This work, Open Graph, aims at achieving zero-shot graph prediction across datasets, different from many concurrent works uh, that uses language models to break the barrier between graph datasets. This work proposed a different topological solution. And one interesting point about this work is that it generates domain-specific graph data using LM. 
This process essentially distills the word knowledge from LMs to our open graph framework. So before talking about its details, here are the QR codes and for the paper, the GitHub and the Chinese article. So to begin with, let's take a review on the generalizability of existing graph models. There have been self-supervised pre-training methods such as GraphCL, which is based on uh, graph contrastive learning, and there are DGI, which is based on uh, deep graph informats. And also there are some prompt tuning methods like graph prompts. These methods achieve generalization in several limited scenarios, including part transfer, file transfer, and task transfer. In task transfer, the model is trained using data collected from the past time, and then is applied to the future time for test. And in field transform, the model is obtained on a subset of the data, like a pre trained on maybe the medicine domain of the, uh, the data network. And then the model is transferred to another subset, like CS citation uh, network. Though the uh, Though this realizes the graph generalization, uh, the, uh, sorry, the graph generalization to some extent, one key limitation of this method is that they cannot handle a very important issue, that is the token set shift issue. So specifically, token set shift involves great changes in the fundamental graph elements, such as node sets, edge types, and feature dimensions. For a specific example, uh, as you can see here, graph A contains nodes like papers, authors, and conferences, and edges like sites, co-author, or published in. Well, uh, when tra transferring graph models from A to B, it in encounters new nodes like products, users, and values, and link types including purchases, add to cart, and add to favorites. So naturally, it is very difficult to transfer the learned parameters for paper nodes to product nodes. So to address this heterogeneity in graph token sets, LLM methods for graphs have realized text-based generalization by leveraging the universal text embedding space. No matter what kinds of nodes and edge types are there, these methods learn unified node embeddings based on text representations. Such methods include OFA, our graph GPT and zero G. However, these methods are highly reliant on text uh, on textual data. They cannot handle structure sheets and textless scenarios. So to address this issue, Open Graph proposes to realize zero-sum graph generalization across graph data without the need for text embeddings. It faces three major challenges. The first one is the token set shift problem we have talked about across graph datasets. We address this issue using a unified graph tokenizer, which is a, a pure topological tokenizer. And the second challenge is how to efficiently model the node-wise relations. This issue mainly comes from the pairwise relation learning of transformer architectures and the large number of tokens in graphs. Open Graph employs a scalable graph transformer design to address this issue. And the third challenge is the domain-specific data scarcity issue. It raises a, quite a question that how to collect training data covering different downstream, downstream uh, domains for our uh, graph foundation model. To address this, uh, we utilize LM as a labeler to distill knowledge about the work from the LMs to the open graph framework. So specifically, the unified graph tokenizer projects the graph data into a sequence of tokens. And each token represents a node and is associated with an embedding vector. This unified tokenizer involves two components. The first one is to use the smooth high order adjacency matrix for feature augmentation. This method introduces high order connectivity into the adjacency and alleviates the sparseness of the adjacency matrix. And the second component is a compression process from the uh, space of Rn to the space of Rd to maximally retain information of the uh, topological information. The open graph 
uh, utilizes representations given by singular valued composition. This method is capable of generating topological, uh, topology aware projection matrix in a very efficient manner. And by employing this topological uh, projection, we achieve cross data, uh, cross data, graph data set unification. And the scalable graph transformer, the second part of graph, uh, open graph, uh, it employs two techniques for efficiency improvements. The first one is to sample tokens only in the uh, training batch. This method shortens the token sequence. And the second one is to alleviate the pairwise relation learning by learning relations between input tokens and only sample anchors instead of learning relations between any pair of uh, tokens in the sequence. And to address the third issue, the domain specific data scarcity issue, Open Graph proposes to distill knowledge from LMs. It can be divided into three components. In the first component, we try to generate uh, uh, nodes for a specific application scenario. And in the second phase, we try to uh, generate some edges, some links between these nodes. And the third component is a recalibration component to uh, make the graph more uh, better for training. So specifically, the first part is to generate all possible nodes of the specific application scenarios as much as we can. We first uh, manually come up with some scenario descriptions. Like if, if we want to generate a graph for recommender systems, we may, uh, we may generate some like uh, scenario descriptions like e-commerce platforms like Amazon and a most general entity uh, name like products. And we utilize a tree of prompt algorithm to iteratively divide the general nodes into subcategory nodes with a final thematic granularity. Let's take a, a specific example as shown here. Maybe the, the initial most general uh, node is the product node. We can divide it into, it, it into clothing, electronics, shoes, healthcare, and baby, baby care. And then we can continue this iterative process to divide it into women's clothing, men's clothing, computers, printers, vitamins. And we can uh, continue this iteration uh, once again. And finally, we can get some instant level nodes like white hooded sweaters, men's clothing, shorts, golf shorts. And in this instant, uh, these instances can uh, well represent some real world, anti uh, real world nodes in the uh, claim scenario. So with these generated nodes, we then infer the possible links between them using an edge generation algorithm. This process is mainly built upon the Gibb sampling algorithm. Instead of estimating the complex joint, uh, the complex joint distribution of the edges, um, the, the, this method only requires estimations for conditional probabilities for chain, changing certain dimensions given a current sample. So in our case, we need to estimate this conditional probability, namely the probability of a new sample based on an old sample. The new sample has only one dimension changes compared to the older one. And this probability is estimated using LM generated embeddings. This greatly improves the efficiency by avoiding estimating all possible edges using LMs. With this conditional probability, we can generate link samples as shown in this figure. For example, to begin with, we may have, sorry, we may have this point as the initial point is randomly generated. And we want to uh, like fix the x x two dimension and try to sample uh, one x one dimension. And this sampling process is based on the uh, conditional probability. And we continue this process to fix one dimension and sample another dimension, and we can get the overall distribution. And uh, the sampling algorithm will give the uh, uh, samples very uh, adhere, uh, adhering to the overall uh, distribution. So except from the deep sampling based uh, generation, uh, generation methods, we also adopt several important techniques 
that are important for the generation quality. The first one is the dynamic probability normalization. As the embedding and similarity-based probability estimations do not necessarily fall into a reasonable range, such as zero to one. So in this technique, we dynamically uh, maintain the last T estimations and infer the upper bound and the lower bound of the overall distribution. Then the new estimation scores can be easily normalized to, the, to a range that, that is close to zero and one. And the second technique is the node locality incorporation. As the formal generation algorithm is completely based on semantic similarity, it tends to connect all nodes with close similar semantics together. However, this is not the case in real world applications due to people's and items limited accessibility on to other nodes, usually one node uh, can only connect to a subset of its similar nodes. To simulate this phenomenon, we randomly assign a locality index to each node and calculate a locality similarity score using these indexes. So these locality similarities are used to recalibrate the estimation to limit the accessibility of the nodes. And to better reflect the natural graph topological distributions, we add an additional uh, graph topological pattern injection module. Simply speaking, we generate nodes, edges, and graphs sequenced sequentially at first, and then we use, utilize a trained GCN model to capture the structural embeddings of the generated nodes, and then utilize these embeddings instead of the original pure text embeddings to regenerate the edges. This approach can better characterize the graph topological patterns to yield better generation quality. Then let's take a look at the experimental results. It is worth noting that open graph is using only the synthetic data and tested on real data sets. So uh, the first experiment is to compare our open graph to other methods uh, in terms of overall performance. So uh, here, open graph is tested under the zero shot uh, setting. Well, uh, because many of the most of the baseline methods cannot do well on uh, zero shot uh, predictions, so we uh, test them under some uh, few shot prediction settings, and we can observe that. Firstly, we can observe superior zero shot prediction capabilities of our open graph framework, and secondly, we can see that. Some of the existing pre-training methods may even fail for cross data generalization. We uh, ascribe these uh, results to that it is really very difficult to transfer from one data set to another data set for these existing methods. So the second experiment is to study the effectiveness of the graph tokenizer. We specifically study the effectiveness of the uh, graph adjacency smoothing and the topological wheel projection. As we can see on uh, the upper figures, uh, when we uh, remove the smoothing uh, completely, the performance greatly drops. So this uh, highlights the importance of uh, conducting uh, adjacent smoothing. And uh, in the second part of this ex experiment, we compare our uh, topology aware projection with some uh, widely known um, uh, uh, substitutions, like we try to learn some one hot embeddings across different data sets. This is the first uh, variant. And the second one is we, we don't learn some embeddings, we just apply some random and uniform embeddings for all the nodes. And the third one is to, it is also widely used in many methods without uh, initial text features. It utilizes the, it learns some. Uh, degree embeddings across different data sets. And, the, and as shown in the results, uh, firstly, we can observe that the topology data wheel projection of our method uh, performs uh, very well compared to the uh, variance. And also, we can see that the one hot embedding methods across different data sets performs very poor. And also, uh, many may expect the degree based embedding method to perform well, but however, However, this method also uh, fails. So uh, in the next uh, experiments, we try to study the pre-training data sets 
the inference of different pre-trained lenses. Here we compare our generated data sets with different uh, different types of uh, 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 different types of pre-trained data sets, including population data sets. Like we remove the normalization, we remove the locality index, and we remove the topological uh, re-injection. And also we compare the generated data sets with some three uh, real-world data sets, the Yelp data sets, the Gowana data sets, and the equivalence 10 million data sets. Uh, among these three real-world data sets, the Yelp data sets and the Gowana data sets have no relations with the test data sets in our experiments. But the movement 10 million data sets is related and is closely related to the movement 1 million and the movement 10 million in the test data sets. And we can see that our uh, generated data set uh, performs very well compared to the uh, components. Uh, firstly, we can see the ablation data sets all performs very poor. And also, we can see that the real world data sets, Yelp and Gowana, performs actually not that good. And we can see movements 10 million results in good performance when it is tested on movements 1 million and 10 million. So this highlights the importance of the relations between the training data sets and the test data sets. So in the next uh, experiments, we try to study the uh, influence of our sampling strategies. Uh, we apply two sampling strategies. The first one is to conduct sequence sampling, and the next one is to conduct the anchor sampling. And we can observe that these two techniques all, uh, both improve memory and computational efficiency. And also we can see that the sequence, the sequence sampling has a positive effect on the model performance. So next I will give you a more uh, hands-on uh, uh, like hands on guidance on the open graph model. So, firstly, uh, open graph is implemented on this uh, environmental setup. We are using uh, PyTorch to uh, build this model. And this page shows the overall code structure. As you can see, we, we uh, include a readme and a history, history direct, uh, directory for the uh, training uh, the, the test result, and we have a models directory for the pre-trained models, and we have a data sets uh, uh, directory for the generated or the test data set. And also we, uh, we have some, uh, we, we split the link prediction uh, code and the no classification code in two directories. And you can download the pre-trained models using the link in uh, this directory. And to use our uh, open graph to reproduce the test performance reported in the paper, you can run the following command lines directly. Uh, it will automatically load the corresponding model and conduct testing on the test deficit. And also, to, if you want to re pre train open graph by yourself, you can run the following command lines. And you, you can also explore some. Uh, pre training with multiple different pre training data sets uh, by uh, editing the uh, train set data sets and the test data sets in the code. And also, uh, for the graph data generation process, we have provided uh, the code for our generation process. It's, uh, they are all in the graph generation uh, directory. And here is an example of our. Uh, Generation is, is completely based on uh, LM prompting. Uh, and specifically, we utilize LM 3.5 Turbo as our LM. Uh, like we want the LM to list all distinct subcategories of like products within the uh, prefix category in the context of like e commerce platforms like Amazon. And ensuring a finer level of granularity, the subcategories should not overlap with each other. And a subcategory should be a smaller subset of the father entity name and directly present the list exactly following the, three, uh, the four subcategory A, subcategory B, and subcategory C without any other words 
format symbols, new lines and zero numbers. And this is the uh, directory of our, the code structure of our link prediction directory. Uh, it contains uh, four major uh, files. Uh, the data handler will provide some data pro uh, processing and accessing utility. utility. And the main uh, .py file will run the training and testing process. And the model .py file will uh, contain the implementation for our models and algorithms. And the params file uh, contain the hyperparameter definition. So in the main uh, in the main file, it mainly it, it is mainly composed of two uh, components. The first one is the if name equals main. It, it just calls the uh, run. Uh, it just creates the data handler and uh, calls the uh, run function of the experiments uh, experiment uh, class. And the experiment class contains some uh, important uh, like functions, the most important ones are the training hook and the test hook, and it also conducts the uh, evaluation and metric calculations. And also, this is the model, the structure of the model file. It, it contains several classes. Uh, the initial projector is for the topology aware projection, and the topo encoder is the high order smoothing. The graph transformer is our implementation for the graph transformer architecture. And we also uh, implement the GT layer, the graph transformer layer. And we also have a utility class for the G4R layer. And we also uh, implement a masker, uh, which can efficiently conduct graph masking for the edge MAE training. If you are interested, you are welcome to check this class. And also open graph class is our uh, main class for the model. And the open graph class uh, mainly compose like the forward process, which is to generate embeddings, uh, the final embeddings. And uh, uh, the most important functions are the calls function, which calculates laws and return the calculated laws for the experiment class to, uh, to do the optimization. And uh, there is also the prediction for test uh, function, which is used for the testing process. And also uh, as, as to, training the, to train the deep network, we also implement a prediction normalization process to uh, prevent the, some like gradient exploding issues. And here is the data handler uh, bell. Uh, the most important one is the multi-data handler. It's, organizes multiple graph data sets together to uh, return the training instances and return the testing instances. And the multi data handlers will do some like uh, make joints, train, uh, train loader and remake initial projections and remake some one initial projections. So that's all about uh, my uh, introduction. Thank you for listening. Here are some uh, personal information about me and also some group information about our group. Any questions? Okay, so uh, many thanks for the house introduction of our house group. Uh, it's like the large range models that's pretty big to uh, like encode text embeddings or give uh, supervised training signal for the graph neurons to a uh, the Graph neurons learning for the graph related tasks. So, and also for the, um, to give the labels for the graph training, we have to build a foundation model of the graph, uh, which achieve a uh, price in zero shot performance uh, directly on the new data set. Uh, so, that also has give a very comprehensive introduction about the code details uh, about the graph. So, um, um, According to the schedule, for now we have six minutes for the QA section. So, uh, if there are any questions for the modeling models as prefixed for the graph learning, uh, if there is no questions, we can uh, finish brief. Okay, so uh,
Oh, 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 yeah. Uh, so, okay. Uh, according to the schedule and other confidence requirements, we will have a 30 minutes coffee break. So, uh, you know, just uh, feel free to have a coffee during this period. Thank you so much. Uh, hope to see. Hope to see you guys come back. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, if you use now adjacency as no uh, prompt techniques, it will improve the lack of models. Uh, performers on like the link prediction tasks. Also, if you use the incidence as the prompt techniques, it may improve the large uh, ability on like the degree calculations, since you only need to calculate the number of neighborhoods here. So different different encoders here may have different impact on different tasks. You have to choose the uh, right encoder to achieve your goals. So this is the basic idea basis finding in this paper. Okay, so let's go through the next paper. And also the last one I want you to use about the 23 learning models is the uh, learning models for dynamic graphs. Uh, in average, the learning models handling uh, in the next step is the spatial temporal uh, dynamic graph. So, so as we see in many, many works, the first step is to Design of uh, tasks to benchmark in the larger models. So uh, I, I will first introduce what's the difference between the special temporal dynamic graphs with the general graphs. So in the general graphs, all the nodes and the are static, so it will never change. And in the special temporal dynamic graphs, we'll have one more value in the edge to demonstrate the time step when the edge will happen, when the connection will happen of this. Of this in this graph. So the, actually the graph is involving is dynamic exchanging under different concepts. So when you uh when going to prompt the graph into a natural language, when we uh demonstrate each edge here, we have one more value to indicate in the time step here. So just like this, then then go through the questions and give the final answer. So this is the task that uh, an author designed in this work larger model for dynamic graphs. So to solve you know, to obtain a high performance for the dynamic graphs, the author has suggested you know, disentangle the special temporal uh, thoughts. So it's a kind of a prompting techniques that we are going to enhance the model's performance. So actually the author first found a general advanced prompting techniques like a uh, train of thought, zero shot, a um, uh, few shot uh, do not guarantee a uh, performance boost here. And uh, DS, uh, DST here instruct the larger model to sequentially think about the nodes of time. And here, uh, just one more, uh, add one more center, like think about the nodes and then the time, or think about the time and then nodes, or pick nodes and then time, and pick time and then nodes. So they also found that with such a prompt engineer, uh, from prompt techniques, uh, no, a lot of models can with uh, has a very significant uh, performance scan here and obtain a high accuracy to handle the tasks related to the dynamic graphs. So, okay, then Jabin uh, is going to introduce uh, the training requirements of the models to conduct some instruction tuning with multiple models. Uh, let's work with Jabin. Okay, um, hello everyone. Um, uh, I, I, I'd like to talk about the tuning requirement uh, to uh, conduct uh, different downstream graph learning tasks. Uh, the motivation of tuning requirement is to convert graphs into sequence in a specific way and the length. Uh, the graph token sequences and the natural language token sequence using the fine tuning method. That's why we we would uh, we should uh, uh, tune the element. and uh, and I think the challenge of the tuning required element is how we can uh, transfer the graph into some uh, sequence. That is uh, because uh, if we don't uh, design, uh, but because if the way of uh, transforming the uh, graph into the um, is not uh, not that very uh, well designed. The structural uh, information uh, beyond the uh, graph is cannot be fully utilized by the LM. So, 
the first work I like to introduce is the uh, instructor J. And I think it's uh, the one of the uh, most uh, representative uh, work uh, using the LM to directly uh, conduct the uh, graph, downstream graph learning task. And, uh, uh, and uh, I think, uh, uh, and I think the uh, they fine tune the instructor J M and uh, the multitask uh, uh, multitask multi prompt uh, instruction instruction data. Uh, for example, uh, the first category of the instruction data is uh, one hour prompt with uh, uh, meta node features, and the second kind of the uh, prompt is uh, three hour prompt with. Uh, uh, with pairs, and uh, also they have structure free prompt. And they use uh, all kinds of different uh, tasks and different prompt template uh, instruction data to uh, instruction tuning the instruction GM and uh, uh, conduct the different kinds of uh, downstream tasks, such as node classification, liquidation, and so on. And uh, uh, they also uh, use the uh, instruction tuning to uh, for the node classification and uh, uh, note that they use the self solvent link prediction to uh, in, uh, to inject the structural information into the instruction GM uh, framework. Uh, for example, they, uh, the uh, they, the prompt behind uh, uh, at the bottom is the self solvent link prediction task. They use this kind of task to inject the structural data into the um, and they're using the whole prompt to instruct uh, tuning the uh, so uh, this is the instruction JR. And the uh, uh, next work I'd like to uh, talk about more is uh, LAGA and it's the uh, latest work and uh, uh, <coughs> I heard it uh, I heard that it uh, recently accepted by the SML two. Uh, 2024 and uh, uh, the first part of the uh, Laga is structure where graph translation uh, and uh, in and specifically uh, in the Laga it provides two kinds of uh, transfer translation uh, in the uh, graph translation the first one is neighbor detail uh, neighborhood detail template uh, it's a uh, it, it transfers the graph into the sequence using the neighborhood detail uh, information. And uh, another way is, you, uh, is that they use the hop field overview template to transfer the gra whole graph into the sequence. And uh, uh, these two kinds of uh, methods is all, uh, is all effectively utilized to transfer the transfer the graph into the graph sequence and uh, further uh, concurrent with the nature with the nature language token and uh, fed into the LM. And uh, the second part of the Laga is alignment tuning. Uh, <clears throat> they use this uh, kind, they, this kind of, of, of the objective to instruct tuning the uh, large language modules uh, with uh, with the graph tokens obtained by two kinds of uh, graph translation method and uh, nature language tokens, and then they can and then they and then know that they conduct uh, three kinds of uh, downstream tasks such as uh, node classification, uh, link prediction, and uh, node description. And uh, I think uh, the node description here is uh, a kind of generated uh, task, uh, which means they uh, generate some uh, uh, generate some path uh, based on the node to describe the node use, uh, using the structure data obtained by the graph translation. And uh, another work uh, I like to talk about is uh, instructed graph, uh, boosting graph large, uh, boosting large language module via uh, graph uh, instruction tuning and uh, preference, uh, preference uh, alignment. And in this work, they uh, introduced uh, four kinds of uh, four, can four groups of the graph centered uh, centered reasoning and the generation tasks. And then the first uh, kind of uh, generated uh, task is uh, graph structure and modeling. Uh, and the, the second part is graph language modeling. And the third part, 
So third part is graph generation modeling, and the fourth part is graph thought modeling. And uh, I will introduce uh, and I will introduce more about four groups of the generative uh, graph learning task uh, later. Uh, and the, the instructor graph uh, overview is showing this figure. They first collect multiple graph uh, tasks and uh, unify them into a code-like format. And uh, they said it's a uh, verbalization. Uh, in, and uh, they use this kind of uh, method, this kind of verbalization to uh, transfer the graph into the uh, graph sequence. Uh, and uh, uh, second, and secondly, they perform graph instructor tuning to improve the ability of the LM to solve the graph reasoning and the graph generation task. And finally, they in, in, and they explore multiple graph uh, scenarios and uh, optimize LM by prevalence uh, alignment. Uh, that is, uh, they use the uh, DPO uh, algorithm to uh, to conduct the preference uh, alignment. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, to be specific, uh, the, uh, the four kinds of, uh, of the four groups of the graph centric generative task is showing in this table. And uh, um, if you, uh, I will not uh, very, very deep, uh, introduce them in very detail. Uh, you can uh, refer to the paper to uh, know, learn more about these four kinds of uh, generative uh, uh, tasks. And, uh, uh, <clears throat> and another work I'd like to talk about is graph weeds. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's also mainly focused up, uh, on the graph reasoning problems. Uh, and, uh, uh, the figure shows an example of solving the connective uh, task uh, uh, within the nature within the nature language with the LM. And then they aim to leverage the instruction tuning to build a powerful instruction following uh, LM uh, to uh, that can map texture description of graphs and uh, structures and then solve different graph problems uh, in nature language and. Uh, and uh, um, or in more, uh, they want to uh, <clears throat> using the instructor tuning uh, uh, method to uh, solve the graph uh, reasoning problems, or kinds of uh, different kinds of graph reasoning problems. And the <clears throat> the overview of nine uh, graph tasks uh, in the in their benchmark is showing this table, and uh, <clears throat> uh, is it uh, and the. Uh, uh, they divided uh, the nine, nine graph tasks into different diffi difficulty from the easy uh, to the hard, and uh, they also analyzed the time uh, complexity of different tasks and uh, uh, some definition of the nine graph tasks. Uh, to to effectively effectively uh, solve the uh, previous uh, nine graph tasks uh, introduced by the graph instruct, uh, they firstly introduce the uh, instruction connection pro process to uh, generate some uh, graph graph instruction uh, using the uh, existing uh, closed source but uh, powerful. Uh, algebra such as GPT-4, uh, they first uh, uh, propose, uh, propose uh, the graph problem generation method to uh, generate to generate some graph problems, and uh, they and then they uh, propose to uh, propose expi uh, explicit reasoning path generation to generate the uh, ex explicit uh, reasoning path. Uh, with using the large language modules, and uh, within the uh, and we and with the uh, generated uh, graph uh, instruction uh, generated by uh, the uh, previous method, they propose a two-stage training paradigm to train the graph with module to 
uh, conduct the nine ta cross uh, task uh, introduced before. And the first stage of the graph width is, <coughs> is mixed task instruction tuning. They use uh, this kind of uh, supervised fine tuning uh, objective to uh, instruction tuning the uh, large language modules with a different task. Uh, and the task is uh, introduced uh, before, uh, that is the nine graph generated task. And uh, the second stage of the graph width is uh, DPO alignment uh, of the reasoning abilities. Uh, they want to uh, align the preference of the uh, graph width to better generate the uh, better generate the uh, generated graph learning tasks answer. Uh, using this kind of DPO uh, losses. <clears throat> and the, the final work I would like to uh, talk about is uh, the Muse graph. Uh, the Muse graph uh, is focused on different tasks such as uh, note classification, link prediction, and uh, graph to test, uh, uh, graph to test uh, tasks. And uh, uh, they want to uh, what they want to do is, is uh, to use the LM to uh, conduct the cross task, not only for, uh, cross task, but also cross data set uh, task. Uh, and uh, uh, the Muse graph uh, overview is shown in this figure. They, uh, firstly, they uh, propose the compacted uh, graph description. Uh, uh, as, I, uh, as I said before, uh, how to uh, transfer the graph into the graph sequence is very important for the uh, require, uh, tuning required uh, only method. So uh, within a graph, how can we select the, uh, how can we select the important uh, and, and uh, uh, informative uh, graph node uh, to uh, 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 the LM to conduct the graph learning task is very important. So they uh, propose the compact graph description to uh, to conduct that. And uh, the and this part they introduce the adaptive input generation to uh, collect the nodes, uh, which is very important for the downstream task. And the second part of the uh, of the Muse graph is uh, diverse instruction generation, and uh, they also uh, Realize that COT uh, is very important, so they use the COT uh, method to instruct the GPT-4 or other very powerful LM to generate the instruction to uh, to later uh, utilize be utilized by the uh, instruction tuning paradigm. And the final uh, part of the views graph is the graph instruction tuning, and then they use different data set uh, uh, from the different tasks to instruction tuning the LM and then uh, obtain a very powerful uh, uh, graph language module that can uh, transfer from different uh, data set and different tasks. Yeah. And then there are some detailed algorithm of the adaptive input generation and the, the detailed prompt of the uh, COT distillation uh, in the Muse graph. Okay, so the uh, the overall of the LM uh, rec tuning required uh, LM only method is uh, is done. And uh, uh, anyone have some question about the, the LM only method? Uh, not 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 only the uh, tuning free, but also the tuning required methods. Okay. Um, my question is um, from tuning free on. So it's a very typical thing like uh, I have a graph. I want to convert the graph in text. So how can I do this? I really want to know how can a structure, a graph structure, suppose there are five nodes and each nodes are connected. How do I convert this structure in text form? 
Okay, thank you. Nice questions. So, uh, Okay, I think the work posed by the Google has a very good answer to these questions. Okay, okay so suppose you have a uh, five nodes, right? And set up nodes at the edge. Uh, okay, then, uh, uh, so this is a question. Uh, this is the example, it has a seven nodes. Then it does, uh, like demonstrates the eyes in like a pair, like the node one, think the node zero, and then it just uh, lists all the edges in the graphs. And, uh, and this is actually the natural language about translating the... Oh yeah, that, that's, a big, that's a very hard to directly translate the graph into only one prompt. So it's like to you have to... Uh, so the first thing you need to do is to like sample subgraph, which is related to a question. Such as if your question is the a node classification, then you just like sample the three hop or several hop of the centric node, and then you will obtain a smaller subgraph. And then when you're trying to translate such a graph, it's much easier. But with the medium, the medium nodes, that's very hard to directly process because the the context of the logic rules is not that dodgy. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. I'm converting the structure of, I'm passing the structure of graph in GM. Yeah. What I'm passing as a textual information, am I passing the full structural information yeah. as a text, or I'm passing the converting the new image? Oh, okay. You you mean the uh, integration of the graph into the graph neural networks? Yeah. No, no. In the graph, graph LLM circuit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. That, that's a good, that's also a good question. So, uh, so when you first use the graph neural networks to process and Generally, the task is like the node classification on the link prediction. So afterwards, the graph neural networks process the graphs with some encoded features. Uh, it has some encoded node representations for each node in the graph. So for example, if you want to conduct like the link prediction, then only the two uh, node representations of the, if you, you want to know whether it is linked, in the other two tokens. So for node classifications, it's just like only one token, one node token. So uh, the, the thing is that the graph networks may uh, process the whole graph, but what to serve as the input for larger models is depends on the task. So if there are only the creations, two tokens, uh, node classifications, one tokens. Okay, thank you for the question. Uh, we will we'll have uh, the last nine minutes, and uh, we will. Uh, uh, Jamie is going to introduce some source code uh, how to play with the graph GPT, which is a relation work that combines the logic models uh, with the with graphs. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, we will have the last nine minutes, and we will. Jamie. Hey. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, due to uh, we, we have to use the uh, computer in the conference, so uh, we, we cannot run the graph GPT with you uh, in this moment. So, but we can introduce uh, uh, we, we can introduce in detail about our uh, GitHub repo of the graph GPT. Uh, 
uh, you, you can see that uh, the star of the Guam GT is uh, over uh, 400. So I think it, it's kind of uh, acknowledge of the community that is uh, the uh, code uh, is of the Guam GT is reliable. <laughs> okay, so uh, the uh, so we can uh, see that uh, the first part of our Guam GT uh, is uh, I, I can introduce some feature of Guam GT to you. Uh, firstly, uh, first. First of all, uh, our Guam GPT could run uh, in uh, academic uh, computational resources, which means you could run uh, your our Guam GPT uh, uh, instru instruction tuning paradigm uh, within only two uh, uh, 30, 90 um, NVIDIA GPUs, uh, which means uh, only uh, oh, uh, uh, less uh, less uh, forty uh, eight uh, GPU memory uh, GPU memory is uh, uh, required of our in our graph GPT uh, because we use the uh, we support the uh, PY uh, lightning training uh, of our graph GPT uh, to use the lightning training uh, uh, code you should uh, update the PY uh, two point uh, one and uh, the uh, environment uh, setup process is showing in uh, this code. You can directly run uh, the uh, shell in in our readme uh, document, and uh, finally, uh, and finally, you can uh, use our graph GPT in this uh, environment. And uh, after you set up your uh, graph. Uh, your environment of our graph GPT, you can uh, simply run the stage one and stage two uh, instruction tuning uh, script, uh, a shell script uh, in uh, in this format. You, you should uh, firstly CD to the uh, graph GPTs, uh, and uh, finally, uh, and then you uh, just uh, SH the shell script, and you can run the graph GPT uh, uh, stage one and stage two. And uh, also, uh, we want to uh, we want to support everyone who inter interested who are interested in our graph GPT repo. So, uh, but we found that uh, some uh, someone will uh, miss some uh, various questions uh, to run our graph GPT uh, in their own environment. So we also uh, we also. Uh, set up the FQA uh, session in the README document, uh, which means uh, if you have any question uh, about running our Web GPT in your uh, document uh, in your own environment, you can firstly uh, bring uh, just quickly uh, check out the FQA session, and uh, uh, maybe uh, your question is also the uh, others' question, uh, and. Uh, it can quickly solve your question. If you have uh, another question, which means uh, not included in FQA, you could directly uh, uh, you can you you could directly uh, build some new issue in the issue part, and I will uh, quickly solve it. And uh, you can also uh, email to me or other authors of the graph GPT, and uh, I will. Uh, I will uh, quickly solve the issue as soon as possible. And uh, there are some resources uh, that uh, need that needed to run our graph GPT. The first uh, is the uh, trained uh, graph GPT checkpoint in the hugging phase, and uh, it used the uh, Vacuna seven billion uh, version one point five as the base uh, backbone uh, base module and. Uh, uh, turned on the archive map uh, map mi mixture data set, and uh, there are also some uh, link. Uh, there are also some data sets in the hugging phase, and uh, we uh, open source all of the uh, uh, all of the uh, resources of the graph GPT in the hugging phase, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, also uh, the uh, very frequently. Uh, uh, Ask the question is that uh, is that uh, uh, how can we conduct the 
a graph text uh, grounding part of our paper. Uh, that is uh, in the text graph grounding uh, <coughs> path. And you could uh, directly assess it and uh, run a case about the uh, main tree uh, pattern script. And uh, you can conduct uh, quickly about the test graph grounding uh, part of our graph GPT. And, uh, in, and include, uh, if you want to uh, run our graph GPT, the first thing is uh, absolutely access the GitHub web of the graph GPT. And the second part is to set up uh, environment of a countdown environment of the uh, graph GPT. And uh, it should uh, include the torch uh, 2.1, uh, and uh, a PYG and uh, a P and Lightning and uh, finally you could uh, and then you could uh, download some uh, download the graph data utilized by the graph GPT and then you just uh, uh, run the scripts of the graph GPT and then you could uh, uh, obtain the checkpoint trained on uh, the data of uh, of uh, of our graph data. And if you want to uh, evaluate the uh, performance of our graph GPT, you could uh, uh, simply uh, run the, uh, run the uh, this shell. And the, this shell is uh, the graph GPT uh, eva evaluate uh, squ uh, shell script. You could just uh, uh, run it uh, based on the uh, shell script. And uh, uh, which I also want to uh, Introduced to you is the high GPT uh, because uh, uh, in our high GPT, uh, we also uh, the uh, we also open source the uh, all process of uh, to conduct the experiment of the our graph GPT and also. And the first part of the high GPT is the uh, is the heterogeneous graph grounding, and uh, in this path you could uh, find all codes about uh, the test uh, about the heterogeneous graph test grounding, uh, and uh, we support the multi GPU uh, multi GPU uh, running script uh, to run the test graph uh, heterogeneous grounding, and. Uh, the second part of the, our uh, high GPT repo is MOT prompting. And uh, using our MOT prompting, uh, you could uh, prompt uh, the, any uh, open source, uh, closed source, uh, chat, uh, open source large language modules such as uh, uh, ChatGPT to, to generate the uh, MOT, uh, to generate the uh, different kinds of uh, instruction data using the MOT uh, prompting techniques. And the third, and the, the third part of our, of, of our high GPT is similar to the graph GPT, which means uh, you, could, you should set up the environment, download the data, and uh, then uh, run the shell script of our high GPT and uh, uh, train our high GPT uh, with the data. And then uh, because uh, the data is, uh, the, the data of our high GPT in the first uh, stage is very large. So uh, we temporarily uh, put the, this data in the uh, by, by do driver uh, because uh, it, it can more uh, easy to, uh, it can be easier to access. Uh, and, uh, uh, first, uh, and uh, later I will uh, put the data into the, uh, into other uh, platform to, uh, let more people to assess it. Okay, uh, the the code uh, uh, the hands-on code part is uh, is is done. A anyone have some question? Okay, uh, many thanks for Chavin's uh, introduction about the uh, source code of hydrogen gravity. So okay, so uh. So just give me one more minute at last. So uh, just one more minute. Uh, okay, just uh, very, very 
quick. Okay. So this is the whole of today's tutorial. So if you are interested, you can scan the QR code. And our survey paper about our dream models for graphs is also coming soon on archive. So uh, I want to thank all you guys uh, stay on the hearing, also all the guys who that's all you Okay, so thank you so much for joining today's tutorial. Many, many thanks. Many, many thanks for uh, also our efforts and your efforts. Many thanks. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, it's uh, it's over. Uh, we can three, three, three to go. <laughs>